With regard to pedagogy, one of the chief things is always to remember the student. No student is like any other student. All of us are individual souls. All of us are individual persons. None of us stand in relationship to God in the same way. And I think this is the story, again, having just come out of Lent, of St. Mary of Egypt, that the path God asked her to travel is actually different than the path that Zosimus was upon. And of course, it was far more rigorous than Zosimus, and this was part of Zosimus's problem. He had a bit of spiritual pride. Intellectual pride can also be an aspect of being a student. And one thing about pedagogy is, is that students need to realize they don't know. And one of the things that professors are really great at, that is the great professors, is the great professors, they know they don't know. I know a lot about Dante. I don't know a lot about Dante. And so the more I start digging around all these areas... The biggest thing that you can give to your students, the most important thing, is curiosity. And w without it, there, there can be no pedagogy. There can be no learning. If I don't think I need anything to learn, why, why go back to school? And I think this is what is driving a lot of the problems in academia, is because what people think they now know in academia trumps all of the other ways of having of knowing, all the other ways of learning, and it trumps all the content of that. Why should I read Shakespeare, the, the great dead white male meme, uh, as though there was anyone else to read? But well, who else am I going to read? Well, no, I shouldn't be concerned about what he has to say. I should be concerned about whatever the, the issue du jour is. And so therefore, what needs to take place for pedagogy is to awaken in the student a desire to pursue the questions. And I think that this is always what's been guiding me. I'm, people might say I'm an intellectual. I'm, I'm just kind of a hack. I just look at a question. I just keep pursuing it. Well, of course, then there are other questions. It's kind of like a hunter who can never stay after the deer. He's always running after the, you know, the rabbit trails down the path. And so it's, it's keeping back off the rabbit trails. And in one sense, this is what also pedagogy is. It's keeping students away from questions that are important, but not always germane, right? So back to the hunting metaphor. If we're hunting the deer, we shouldn't get distracted by X, Y, and Z. And of course, sometimes in hunting deer, I had a friend, he, well, he's actually my Sunday school teacher. The one thing I remember from his class, right? We talked about imagination yesterday. He left me this wonderful imaginative story, which has so many applications, but he's on a hill and there's a clearing in front of him and he's hunting deer. And he says he can see coming through the trees some doe from both sides, doe. And of course, behind them will be the buck and the doe come out into the clearing and the buck just start to emerge. When into the clearing walks a bear and all the deer scatter. Well, of course, he's not hunting bear. But oftentimes, when we're looking at certain questions, bigger questions then emerge. And so the smaller questions lead us into the bigger questions. So I think for pedagogy, it is first and foremost, how do we get the students engaged? And this is where I believe the imagination is so desperately needed. And the biggest problem with modern education is it is so unimaginative. And it can't be imaginative if you treat every student as if they were the same. And my teaching is largely built around discussion, dialogue, conversation, because lectures are great. Lectures can be great. And I've heard many, many great lectures. But quite frequently, most of the time I learned when I was having my formal education were things I read but conversations and even arguments I had with professors, with my fellow students, things like that. Because those are the things that hang with you. I'm going to leave this conference. We're at a conference. I'm going to remember the conversations, I believe, far better than the lectures, however good the lectures were, because the conversations have engaged my mind in a way completely different than what uh, Curry Frederica did or Father Stephen did. 
Deacon Nicholas Kotar may be a, a bit different, but um, but the thing that I remember from him is something that engaged the mind. And for people watching this, you'll have to listen to his lecture and watch it. But there was something, there was one point in which I don't think anyone was not listening. And when you get to that lecture, you will know what it is. Did you? Till the end